Romans 4 verse 20, right? He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So it talks about Abraham and it says he did not waver, right? So waver, we know, means, uh, you know, he was not shaky, right? He was not um, thinking uh, about possibilities, impossibilities, you know. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, which means that when God had spoken, when he knew that God had spoken, he held on to it, right? He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Okay, So when we are at that place where maybe our tendency is to waver, right? Tendency is to waver at the promise of God, tendency is to doubt, not God, you know, did you really speak and so on. Here is a principle here, you know, first of, of course, the exhortation, do not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. Unbelief causes us to do that, not really walk in and experience the promise of God. God gives a promise for this purpose, that we might receive it, appropriate it, walk in it, experience it, right? So unbelief causes us to waver and therefore causes us to not walk, not receive the fullness of it, right? But if we sense that, you know, my faith is wavering, then the thing to do is to go back to the person of who God is, you know, the very nature, the very character of who God is, uh, give glory to God and therefore be strengthened in faith, right? Give glory, you know, when we give glory, meaning when we praise, when we honor, when we thank uh, for who he is, right? Um, if we have problems, right, looking at our own lives to say who he is, we can look into scripture, right? We can look to the word of God, how he dealt with people, how he helped, how he led and and we can give glory. And therefore, our strength, uh, our faith is strengthened in God, right? And we come to that place of not wavering at the promise of God, right? So, yeah, with that, let's uh, let's pray and, um, yeah, and give him glory, right? Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for this, um, for this exhortation and the principle, Lord, and the instruction, God. We thank you, Lord. Your word says that um, when you look at the faith of Abraham, that he did not waver. And so, God, that is something that that is applying, uh, applicable for each one of us, that you want us not to waver, Lord, at your promise. Lord, that you want us to be strong. Uh, you want us to not be in a place of unbelief, but be in a place of faith. And so, God, we, we just God, bring our lives before you, all those various things, God, that you have spoken, God, that you have promised. And um, Lord, this morning we choose, Lord, to look at your promises and we choose to be strengthened in faith, Lord, giving you the glory, giving you the honor. Yes, Master, we, we believe that you are who you say you are. We believe, oh God, that you are our creator, God. We believe that you are the one who is all powerful and all wise and you are the ever present God. And we also believe, oh, Father God, that, oh, Lord, what you said will come to pass, oh, God, because your word says that you are a rewarder to those who diligently seek you, Father God. And so, God, we seek you diligently, knowing that you are the rewarder, Lord, and from our whole heart, oh, God. Um, yes, Master, we thank you, and we give you all the praise even today. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So, um, you know, wholeness, we, I think we are in chapter 8, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just started with um, chapter 8. Yeah, we looked at how we need to, we looked at the mind, the battlefield of the mind. We looked at some of those challenges and some of the practical things that you need to do um, when it comes to renewing the mind, right? We, we looked at all that. So, so there's, a, there's a quite a lot you know, packed into chapter 7. Right? Um, and uh, it'll be good if we take our time to go through and make sure that we're able to, you know, especially things like this, you know, take every thought captive, uh, make it obedient to the knowledge of Christ. Um, and, uh, you know, if there is any battle still happening, you know, making sure that we are able to cast down strongholds and so on, and uh, and to constantly renew our mind. 
thoughts, right? We constantly renew our minds. Every time we read scripture, that's an opportunity for us to renew our mind. Okay, uh, to re renew our mind. What does it mean to renew our mind? Basic, change it, renovate it, right? Um, so that, yeah. So, which means it, simple things could be to take on some truths, some thoughts, to let go of some things. Okay. It will always happen right? when it comes to renewing our mind. When you take on, you're also letting go, releasing. Okay, so Maybe some things were there for many, many years, maybe right from childhood. right? And this is something that or it could be some concept. This could be a pattern of thinking. You know, if somebody does this to me, this is what I will do. It is so deeply ingrained, right? Um, but there comes a time when you encounter the truth in God's word, and you, you need to decide either to let it go or let it stay with your life. And you know that area of our life remains untransformed. Right? That beha behavior doesn't change. Right. So, but if you want that behavior to change, our life to be transformed, then we need to definitely, as we take on the truth, we need to let go of some wrong thinking. We need to let go of some thought patterns, etc. Right. So, every time we worship God, every time we encounter God, you know, that's a time. That's an opportunity for us to um, renew our minds. Okay. And we also looked at developing a positive mindset. Okay, um, yeah. Okay, so let's look at crucifying the flesh. Okay, um, so the Bible talks about that uh, about the flesh. Uh, what do we mean when we say the flesh? Is it this? <laughs> Is it the world? Okay, so how do we know that? Yeah. What does he write? Mm. Everything that is in the world. And he says, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Okay. So, one thing that we can conclude is okay, these are desires of the flesh or appetites of the flesh. Okay. Maybe some are blatantly wrong, but some could be uh, appetite. It's a good appetite, but the craving is to satisfy that appetite in unrighteous ways, right? Not God ordained ways. So, so that's something we could think of, right? Okay. What else? What else would mean the flesh? Because we need to be clear. What are we crucifying? <laughs> like, what are we putting to death? Hmm. So, when we say flesh, you're saying, okay, sinful nature, earthly things. Hmm. Hmm. So, um, let's look at Romans, the book of Romans and chapter 8. Okay. Romans chapter 8 it says, um, verse 5, okay, Romans 8 and verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Okay, So, and uh, those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded. Okay, What does that mean? It means to be fleshly minded. So which means here is a here is a kind of mind which is completely filled with carnality, things of the flesh. Right? So for to be carnally minded is enmity against God and so on. Right? So when we say flesh, crucify the flesh, put to death the flesh, we're talking about the appetites. We're also talking about something that is not renewed, something that is fleshly minded okay the unrenewed part of us okay right so this is uh, this is what peter says that um, 
first peter chapter 2 and verse 11 okay fleshly lust war against the soul okay. first peter 2 verse 11 abstain from fleshly lust because what do they do they war against the soul okay so war is battle right war is conflict and war is something where there you know if you look, if you look at a war there is a lot of damage right from one party to another there are maybe if there are two countries or maybe more who are in um, yeah um, sorry nina just noticing your comments thank you that part of us which is not yielded to god yeah carnality um, right so um, so when we look at wars we see that uh, yeah, there are maybe there could be countries and they, there is when there is a war raging there is a lot of damage right damage to property and more importantly there are lives that are lost right there is a lot of damage okay so here uh, peter says you know i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain what does abstain mean what is abstinence abstain stay away from right just stay away right abstain don't indulge like stop it stay away from fleshly lusts which war against the soul so this is what happens you know whenever we give in to the demands of the fleshly lust it is a war against our soul right it is a war against the soul which means that um, there is damage that is happening to our mind there is damage that is happening to our thinking right there is damage that is happening to our imagination right um you know as like, there's a lot of videos that are coming up where people are talking now there's a realization that hey if if i continue to watch things that are fleshly you know like pornography and so on they're saying that it is it is damaging to the mind now the medical faculty is also you know they are catching up the fraternity is catching up and saying yeah that is actually damage to thinking there is actually damage to emotions there is actually a you know kind of a rewiring of thoughts and imaginations that's happening in the mind and uh, and which which does not which drags people into depression and which uh, you know prevents people from uh, you know living or relating to people in a healthy way uh, it, it 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 actually stops people connect, from connecting in a healthy manner with, with the rest of humanity right so so people are realizing that and this is the scriptural truth right when we give in to fleshly lust and we're not just talking about pornography here we're talking about everything that is to do with carnality right um, what other things could be there where you could say you know this is carnality right when we look at galatians 5 it gives a list right the works of the flesh okay galatians 5 19 um, and then verse 22 it talks about the fruit of the spirit right galatians 5 19 says now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness right verse 20 idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like and it says and the like which means etc etc right the list is uh, it is list goes on right and he says that uh, of which i tell you beforehand just as i told you in time past that those who practice such things will not in inherit the kingdom of god then goes on to say but the fruit of the spirit is this love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control and against such there is no law which means there is you know there's nothing which is against this but the works of the flesh you know he gives a partial list and which is actually quite an exhaustive list so which means that you know in this there are some things which are acts of the flesh there are some things which are spiritual or interacting with the powers of darkness right like idolatry and sorcery there are some things which are maybe motivations of the heart right like hatred right it's something that you have in your heart for another person um, jealousy 
again not seen outwardly but then you have it inside your heart selfish ambition right wrong teachings which are or long beliefs which are heresies envy again something that you have in your heart murder which is an act right drunkenness rivalries etc okay so you list down all these categories and say these are works of the flesh okay so when a person is controlled by it when a person gives into it and uh, you know these are what we could say are it's a work of the flesh it's a fruit of the flesh and uh, therefore it is warring against the soul you know you realize that hey i used to be a strong person of faith but suddenly there is fear right i used to be strong in this area or i used to have strong understanding of this area like right, of different things you know maybe you've learned something from scripture and you're strong in it um and suddenly you realize that if you know if you have a lifestyle of giving into the flesh you realize that hey these things have been broken down right these things have been stolen away because that's what the enemy does and it is a war it is a battle it is a conflict against the soul right against the mind and whatever is there of the mind and when it's when we give into the fleshly lust it means that our will is being slowly broken right our will is being uh, broken or you know weakened to the point of being broken which means you know what is our will you know i our desire our maybe strong desire our decision making right to do the right thing right? you want you have a will you have a strong will to do the right thing. that is being weakened that is being broken okay so that is how the battle for the soul um or the damages of the battle for the soul right this is what happens so um so we need to be we need to be careful we need to bring to an end these kinds of things we need to crucify the flesh okay we're going to look at how to do that but uh, another thing that we need to understand is when there is when there are seeds sown into our life we can be sure that you know given the right environment it is going to bear fruit right simple truth you know um i think at yeah at home we were just uh, using the uh whatever vessel you know the, the the water from cleaning the vessels right maybe we wash vegetables or we uh, clean the um clean the you know cooking vessels and we were just using that water to water the garden the plants and then suddenly suddenly we realize hey there is a tomato plant coming up okay suddenly we realize there are some chilies that are coming up okay now we didn't actively go and plant that tomato or plant that chili it was just those seeds which were there you know in the vessels uh, those chilies that were cut maybe that cutting board knives we washed and that water we collected and poured into the uh, the plants in the garden and suddenly we see chilies coming up we see tomatoes coming up okay, so there's a thing that we learn okay as long as there are seeds and the right, right environment there's a plant which is going to grow right there's something that is going to take root and there's something which is going to bear fruit here in this it was positive we were happy hey we're getting tomatoes now we can actually take some right uh, it's it's bearing fruit we didn't realize un until we saw the plant and then we saw the you know we saw the vegetables growing out of it chilies and tomatoes and so on so that's a positive thing but the negative thing is this as long as there are roots or uh, there are there are seeds being sown we can be sure that something is taking root we can be sure that one day you know it might be hidden but one day it will bear fruit right so what are some seeds we need to be careful right because uh, scripture talks about the fact that he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap eternal life but he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap death right so so we need to be careful okay so what seeds were sown into our lives okay so when we're talking about seeds we are talking about maybe some some ideas right when we talk about seeds we are also talking about some things that we learnt some things that we watched we observed you know maybe at home we saw and then we realized that hey 
i am displaying it you know like one day uh my, my wife said you know you, you sound just like your father right and i think i just reacted to something i, I uh, and it was i was upset and i reacted and i said something or you know i made a noise and she said you sound just like your father right and how did that come from i had spent time i had observed right so certain things we learn right i'm sure in uh, you, you're learning about marriage marriage and family finished oh so you're all experts now so <laughs> so the thing is this you know we learn from our parents by observation right some of the things in the conversations the way they handle money who handles money right we learn it and right? maybe it was the mother who was always making financial decisions we learn it but that's a seed that is sown so we're growing up and you are you know you're getting married and and you you expect the wife to handle the money right and you you are very upset why is she not doing it why because that's how it was at home that was a seed that is sown right so these take root so some examples of seeds could be discouragement negativity strife anger and the list goes on right uh, abandonment rejection and these take root and bear the wrong kind of fruits the negative fruits in our lives okay so we again you know when we were children maybe we did not have the right kind of environment but now having known god having come to the lord we you know we have the opportunity to intentionally you know sow good seeds in our hearts right so we're talking about maybe we can intentionally remove those things we identify and remove those things and and like we learned you know we lay the axe to the root lay the axe to the root the holy spirit you know the lord jesus talked about i mean um John the Baptist talked about the Lord Jesus Matthew chapter 3 and he says um you know this is who Jesus is he's the one who baptizes with the holy spirit right and he the winnowing fan in his is his hands and uh, you know the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire and so on even now the he says the axe is laid to the root right he's talking about the baptism of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit and he's referring to it in this manner saying that even now the axe is laid to the root so the thing is to lay the axe to the root of the things you know um sometimes we we can probably do a cosmetic ch change you know change in behavior okay people are watching let me be on good behavior right uh, or i'm in this surrounding i should be this in this manner i should act like this i should speak word, words like this take the environment be in a different environment the behavior changes right can our behavior change with the environment you know some are good things like right? you know like in family maybe we are we are more relaxed right with friends we are more relaxed right maybe in a work setting we will be little formal that's fine we're a little more professional that's okay but you know if we are you know different to the point of being unrighteous if you are different to the point of being you know fleshly and carnality and so on then there is a there is an issue right if you are different in different environments so um we need to be clear that um the the axis laid to the root right what is it that is causing this kind of behavior right so it's not just behavior modification it what is behind that behavior what is causing that behavior right that's very important what is causing the behavior what is causing this person to behave in such a way is it some root that they or is it some you know some seed that they received in life some beliefs that they have yeah so all this right so laying the axe to the root you know matthew chapter 3 john the baptist you know just re read through it says even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees therefore every tree which does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than i and so on right so he will baptize with the holy spirit and water okay uh, sorry fire holy spirit and fire right okay so uh, we we studied this again laying the axe to the root some of the things that that cause problems in our lives that cause a 
carnal reaction carnal behavior is self jealousy pride lust right we looked at these um and um, can i again go back to the book laying the axe to the root and um, you know the free download is available uh, abcw.org/book so you can download that and uh, you know and study and it it can be a good time and that's a that's a reason why at the start of every academic year in bible college we again revisit it right when the new batch comes in we can revisit it and say you know uh, we need to lay an axe to the root and this is a way to really clear out you know if there is a root if there is something um that is conflicting with the behavior that god wants then we need to allow the holy spirit to lay the axe to the root right okay um another thing that we see um in galatians uh, is also the fact that the key to walking in the spirit uh, or key to having victory over the things of the flesh okay let's turn to galatians chapter 5 okay galatians 5 and verse 16 okay galatians 5 verse 16 it says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh and verse 17 talks about how the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary or opposite each other so that we do not do the things that we want to do that we wish to do right so this it creates a conflict the flesh always creates a conflict with the things of god right always creates a conflict with god wants for us or things of the spirit always there is a conflict so um so it says you walk in the spirit like when you walk in the spirit now you're going to win the battle okay what is the battle the battle against the flesh right? battle against the urges the appetites of the flesh and again i just want to remind us when we looked at the, the you know what what comprises the flesh you know it it's different categories it's motives it's attitudes it's uh, behavior patterns um, so many things that we saw okay uh, yeah galatians 5:19 right talked about that so uh, we looked at the entire list so here if we live or if we walk in the spirit we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh okay and then we as we go down verse 25 it says if we live in the spirit which means that you know our life is a life of walking in the spirit okay so it's not just a moment it's not just a pathway but it's it's a life if we live in the spirit it says let us also walk in the spirit okay so every area of our lives at every area of our lives if we live in the spirit or if we walk with the spirit walk in the spirit we will not uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh okay so the so the key thing is what to understand okay how can i walk in the spirit like how can i be sensitive to the things the leading of the holy spirit right and we know okay the holy spirit leads me the word and the spirit they 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 are this one and the same as in you know it does not contradict right to be led by the spirit uh, is to again not contradict the word of god and so on right um okay okay so when we walk in the spirit okay we also talk about the fruit of the spirit okay which means uh, the outcome the end result of what would happen as a result of the work of the holy spirit in our lives okay fruit of the spirit is what it is love love for god love of god's people it is joy you know it's a joy that is an emotion that is produced in our hearts right it is peace it is long suffering or patience it is kindness it is goodness faithfulness gentleness self governing ability or self control now all these are the end result or continuing to develop as a work of the holy spirit in our lives okay so it's a very important thing right this is this is the fruit of the holy spirit this is the work of the holy spirit in my life now if the you know 
for the holy spirit to produce this in my life what should i do what should my role be submission so how how do we how do we practically submit may you can use the mic so submission so yeah. it like to uh, obey or what holy spirit or the word of god is saying even if it is not something what i like to do mm. but still i have to be submissive so i have to make a choice of not doing what i want but to do what god is telling me to do mm. okay so maybe i have an idea and i want to do this and uh, you know and but the holy spirit leads me and gives me wisdom and i yield to it even if it's something that is very different from what i've already you know made up my mind maybe right um it is also something that i you know when we say uh, i need to be uh, led by the spirit of god i need to cooperate okay i need to cooperate right i need to surrender yield cooperate now it's a it's something uh, you know something that we delight and sometimes it's it's easier right to say oh wow god yeah i also think the same way fantastic you know we say amen to that lord but if you see things differently right uh, but god this is painful you know this is uncomfortable or this is difficult that those are the times when we resist right when we resist and say or not this time or those previously yes lord but not this time or just one time no right um, so those are the times you know when we yield when we cooperate uh, we are actually walking right walking in the spirit when we when we so uh, scripture is clear walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh it, it seems very simple right uh, this is the key you you want to see transform behavior be transformed by the renewing of your mind with the truth of god's word you walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh and so on so it seems very seems very simple but we know that when it comes to actually implementing it why is it difficult well when when we see these things particularly uh, most of the people will think only spiritually like being holy in some other way but uh, it depends upon the character and how we are how we how we behave ourselves and it's all matter right uh, so maybe uh, some of us maybe we are we are showing obedience to god in 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 one perspective but on the other perspective living in this world uh, we are not we are not fulfilling his purpose to to the full and and most of the people they don't know also that they were doing wrong and they are not obeying uh, uh, thinking in only in one side of the coin so maybe it's ignorance right uh, but then you know with with the ignorance there is no struggle you know we just end up yielding to the things of the flesh right draw of the flesh but uh, sorry yeah this yeah so the struggle is you know one thing is uh, yes it's not convenient right it's not convenient or i have this understanding that hey this is too spiritual let's be practical right yeah yeah so both uh when we you know when we, so, no no when we when yeah yeah wanting to do the right thing because but the draw pull of the flesh is so strong and we struggle right the other thing is um struggling to make that right choice okay so um you know i uh, um, because it's inconvenient because it's difficult because it's costing me something right it's costing me something you know uh maybe uh, maybe i don't want to compromise and it's costing me something right maybe i you know 
things like uh, you know let let's if, if you look at the list you know galatians 5:19 we see uh, certain things like contentions and jealousies and you know selfish ambitions and dissensions dissension is uh, again you know um, divisions etc right envy um now some things we see okay it's it's outright you know yeah, some things we just say okay this list i will not even face you know that's fine you know whenever there's a suggestion i don't even consider it but certain things are very subtle these are attitudes of the heart or motives now um, like envy maybe envy can be even spiritual right corinthian church they were envying right and paul had to write about the gifts of the spirit and he's saying hey you're all part of the body so he's saying you cannot the hand cannot say to the eye i don't need you right uh, you cannot or you cannot say you kind of look down on yourself and say i'm i can't be a part of this etc right so these are very subtle things but yet uh, it can be uh, giving in to the pull of the flesh right very subtle things right okay so um so the the good news is this we always keep this scripture in front of us you know uh, i want to be led by the spirit and i know as a child of god i can be led by the spirit and if i'm walking in the spirit as led by the spirit of god then i know that i will conquer i will be victorious and i will not give in to the things of the flesh okay, to keep that yeah and you are seeing all these things laying ax uh, uh it can self jealousy pride mm. and less maybe can we uh, is it because of the ignorance because uh, why i am telling that this is uh, this lust and self maybe uh, these things as a christians for us to conquer these things is very easy uh when compared to pride and jealousy like being judgmental critical condemning what we what we read in galatians uh maybe as a christians uh for us sorry conquering which is easy like lust lust of the flesh is easy than these things being judgmental critical pride because uh, maybe for the for the worldly people maybe this this lust of the flesh is maybe difficult for them but for as a christians for us conquering these things are easy because we think like these are only the important things we don't consider the remaining things uh, and we are going away in these things mostly as a person is it because of ignorance or uh... um well actually um, see one thing is each person is brought up differently each person has different struggles so i won't say that okay one once a person is a believer then things like adultery fornication and uh, you know all those things are not struggles for a believer i won't say that yeah because i mean you look at the you look at some of this recent happenings in church church leadership you see that hey it has been a struggle for them right um and so yeah so we can't really say you know um but yes these are things are more subtle in the sense the attitudes of the heart things certain things which are not very apparent which are hidden you know these are uh these are definitely much more difficult um yeah so so that's the yeah, some things are hidden some things are apparent right um so when you say ignorance um it is like let's say jealousy is envy etc um well maybe the person doesn't even want to consider it and it could be in spiritual matters like for example you know it could be in ministry it could be uh, you know you're you're comparing how a church is doing and you know how you're comparing and there is envy because of that right how come you know they start, they came only now they came started only now you know things like that right or you know we've been so faithful we've been doing all things right and i know certain things in their life which is wrong and yet you know so so there is a jealousy there is envy so even in spiritual matters right gifting anointing and all those things so um yeah so i i won't say that uh, for some the world you know this is easy or uh, i won't i won't say that definitely uh, there are different things which are struggle for different people right yeah 
um, yeah, the key the key is again also always to remind ourselves to to present ourselves and our members and those who are you know come uh, uh, from alive to God, right? Romans six talks about that, right? So to present ourselves and as slaves of righteousness, right? As people who have been set free. Uh, from being slaves to sin to be slaves of righteousness. So, so that's the thing. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I think. Okay. So, um, you know, let's look at Romans 8. Okay, so Romans 8. Um, Romans 8 talks about um, the fact that we are debtors to live according to the Spirit. Okay, Romans 8 verse 12. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, which means we are actually debt. We are indebted to live according to the Spirit. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. Okay, so that's that's where the path leads, right? If we are going to be consistently having a lifestyle of living according to the flesh, it is going to lead to death. It is going to lead to separation. It, you know, it is going to lead to physical death. You know, even indulgence of the flesh, right? Appetites of the flesh, it will lead to death. You know, let's say some form of addiction, some form of abuse of the, you know, body and you know, it is going to lead to death, physical death, maybe, right? But we you know it's it um, it will lead. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You know? So that's another thing. One is you are led by the spirit, and then you will not live according to the flesh. Here, uh, Paul is saying, and if if you if by the spirit, right? you put to death right so the holy spirit is maybe uh, he is empowering he is leading he is giving ideas suggestions right uh, wisdom so with that who is doing the work you put to death right so we take responsibility we take ownership by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live. Okay, one thing is to actively sow to the spirit, right? Uh, which leads to life and peace, right? Not to sow to the flesh. Here it says that we take the responsibility of putting to death or bringing to an end the deeds of the body, right? So we, first of all, we need to know that we are on the winning side, that we are the ones. Because of our new identity in Christ, we will dominate sin, and sin cannot dominate us. You know, that's the basic thing. As long as we believe that I'm only human, and uh, all other humans are struggling, so I will also continue to struggle through life. Right? There's no point in even proceeding further, right? Because that's a very clear deception, very strong deception. I'm always going to be under this circumstance. I'm always going to live like this. That is not the step to recovery. That is not the step to freedom. Right? That is not the step to putting to de death the things of the flesh. We need to come to a thing. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm struggling right now. That's a fact. But this is what scripture says. That sin cannot dominate me because I'm a new creation. Right? Um, and he who is in me is victorious you know stronger is greater than he who is in the world right he's talking about the holy spirit right? so so this is what we do that uh, by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live right so that's verse 13 and uh, you know verse 14 talks about being led by the spirit and so on right? okay right so Crucifying the flesh or putting to death the thing, things of the flesh, you know, uh, these are hard decisions, difficult decisions, difficult choices. And um, like with all difficult, hard decisions, well, uh, 
it it would mean that there is some amount of pain it can't be without discomfort it can't be without pain okay um so that's the thing and one needs to be knowing that the path leads to death one needs to be careful right knowing that you know progressively it leads to a place of physical death it leads to a place of you know having this lifestyle will and i i it leads to a place of me coming to a place of being hardened my heart being hardened you know that's the thing you know hebrews 3 talks about that i think right hebrews 3 says that don't be um hardened because of the deceitfulness of sin right let's look at uh, hebrews 3 Eight is it? Thirteen, uh, right? Hebrews three thirteen. Exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Okay, Hebrews three thirteen. Like so, sin has this thing of hardening us. Hardening us meaning, you know, you you become so calloused to the things of God. You lose sensitivity to the things of God. Now, the the longer we have a lifestyle of sin, so. the things of god lose i mean you're not interested anymore right so that's the that's the problem with sin right you become callous what does callous mean it's like you know if you're playing guitar you know if your your fingers become callous over a period of time right so so i can't yeah i'm not i can't actually feel certain th- because uh, it's become hardened the fingertips and right? because it's playing you know keep playing and then it becomes hardened right so i can't feel you know right hand yes i can feel pain i can feel you know something is soft or hard but with my left hand the fingertips are hardened at least these four fingers are hardened right so so that is what it is your heart your inner man loses sensitivity to the things of god right the deceitfulness of sin causes that so you you continue repeatedly uh as having a lifestyle of sin it hardens us to the things of god hebrews 3:13 is very clear and which means we 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 end up in a place where we where we are distancing ourselves from god we are distancing ourselves from god's people well god is reaching out in grace god is sending you know messages right after the other one after the other but we distance ourselves and it is possible like we see in hebrews it is possible to come to a place of saying okay i don't need jesus so that's the danger it's come it's come you know it can we can't rule that out to say you know i reject christ i reject everything um i don't need any more right it's possible okay so um uh, we are looking at you know uh, several aspects of walking in the spirit and spirit and putting to death the things of the flesh so so the thing is the antidote is to be rooted in him to rooted to be rooted in love to be rooted in christ right so colossians 2 verse 6 talks about that as you have received christ the lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him rooted and built up in christ established in the faith abounding in it as you've been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving so what does it mean to be rooted in christ oh yes. okay so we'll uh, take a break i think we've gone beyond our okay we'll take a break and come back right?